Bhopal is a city of 1.5 million people, situated in the heart of India, halfway between Delhi and Mumbai, and is the capital of the state of Madhya Pradesh. It is also the location of the world's worst industrial disaster, when during the night of 2nd 3rd December 1984, methyl isocyanate gas leaked from a Union Carbide pesticide plant. Between 8,000 and 10,000 people died that night, and by 1994, more than 25,000 people had died as a result of gas exposure. A further 500,000 people were affected by the gas, with 150,000 people still suffering chronic effects from gas exposure. When the plant was built in 1969, acid waste streams and untested technologies were flagged as concerns in the production of its main product, a pesticide known as Seven. Our first visit is to the abandoned site laboratories. So when the government has cancelled their lease, they handed over the 62 acres premises to the state government as they have not cleaned. It was their duty to clean up whatever material is in the plant premises. Like uh, we are giving our house on rent to a tenant, when he vacated uh, the house, we will allow just some newspaper broomstick. If there is some harmful things in the house, we will tell the tenant, take it with you. So here, it was not uh, told by the government to clean up all these things. And they just cancel the lease and they just hand over free. <coughs> Come this side. So these are our chemicals, reagents for the testing the samples. So many of these are highly poisonous. This high pressure glass water for taking MIC sample from the plant, then we send for analysis to quality control. One of the key process chemicals required to produce seven was methyl isocyanate, MIC, a highly reactive, toxic, and potentially explosive gas. It was mixed with alpha naphthol to produce the active ingredient for seven, known as carbaryl. Bottles of acids, alkalis and organic solvents stacked messily beneath the benches and covered in cobwebs are testament to the problems of waste abandonment and site cleanup on an industrial scale. The lab windows are broken and there are no securable doors to the building. Security on the site is minimal and as we approach the packing factory we find that the site is a favourite play area for children. This being India cricket's the favourite game in town. The factory is where the active ingredients of the pesticides were cut and packaged. Until recently this area contained 300 tonnes of waste pesticides. Attempts to incinerate the waste have been unsuccessful. At the time of our visit we did not know where on the site these wastes are now stored. Whilst India is developing rapidly currently lacks the kind of infrastructure needed to handle this type of waste. The Indian government has established a group of ministers, GOM, to examine all the issues relating to the Bhopal disaster. Preliminary site investigations by the Centre for Science and Environment, CSE, in India have shown that the area around the plant is heavily contaminated with pesticides, chlorinated benzenes and heavy metals. We move on to the seven and MIC plants. This area is known to be heavily contaminated. 
so I don protective coveralls and a respirator. Mr. Chowhan declines my spare. There's a whole area near the seven plants. This contaminated with the mercury because mercury was coming from the pan filter, one of the equipment using for the filtration of the slurry. And the ro rotating seal, they were using mercury. And when the seal got break, the mercury was falling on the ground. So even after 26 years, you can see by your naked eye, the mercury is lying in the plant. So it was falling on the ground from the top. The mercury? Yeah. And there's a lot of mercury in the soil. In this case, there's a lot of mercury in there. Waste streams from the plant were both highly toxic and highly acidic, and these presented a problem for disposal. An area north of the site was selected for construction of a solar evaporation pond. Here the wastewater and sludge would first be evaporated before the residue was placed on a landfill. I'm stunned to find that a highway is now being driven between the solar evaporation pond and the landfill apparently without any kind of assessment of how this will affect movement of groundwater in the area. To help you get your bearings, here's the Union Carbide plant. And this is the soda evaporation pond. Concerns that discharges from the Union Carbide plant could be poisoning the local groundwater were raised as early as 1980 when there were reports of cattle dying. A Union Carbide internal telex, dated 25th of March 1982, stated that the solar evaporation pond had almost emptied through lining leakage. A Union Carbide document from 1972 shows that lining failure causing groundwater pollution was well recognised. The dried sludge containing unevaporated hydrocarbons and heavy metals was disposed of next door on a landfill. Here too children play, and cricket is again the favourite game in town. The temperature is well into the 40s and there is a faint, sweet, phenolic smell coming from the surface of the landfill. The remains of a liner can be seen on one flank. It's barely one millimetre thick, decayed and inadequate for the task of containment. A group of ministers document from June 2010 shows there is now 1.1 million tonnes of contaminated soil to dispose of. Furthermore, the pollution from the site predates the 1984 disaster. Sandwiched between the Union Carbide site, the landfill and the railway is the Blue Moon Bustee, one of the areas worst affected by both the gas disaster and the contaminated water. In 2004, the Indian Supreme Court ruled that a safe water system must be installed to the affected communities. Today the water supply, mostly shipped in by tankers, is highly irregular and residents are still forced to resort to the contaminated supply. Where supplies are received, they make a big difference. My guide and interpreter is Sanjay Verma. So she said water, the groundwater of this area, especially the water from this pump was smelling so bad and Every time we drink that water, our stomach hurts, but the new water, it doesn't smell bad and it's much better. Good. Are you happy with the new water? Yes, and that water is very good. Good. And the new water, when we drink, we feel so good, but if we drink this water, we vomit and our stomach hurts. Contaminated groundwater has now spread several kilometres from the site and is being linked to a higher incidence of birth defects and cancers. 
this severe contamination has been dubbed Bhopal's second disaster. We return to the site to look again at the first gas disaster. These pipes lead back to the storage area and tank 610, where water mixed with methyl isocyanate, releasing the gas. Union Carbide has always claimed that the release of MIC was the direct result of sabotage by an unnamed disgruntled worker who deliberately introduced water into the tank. Independent observers, victims, the Indian Central Bureau of Investigation and former site workers, however, blame safety cutbacks and management failures for the disaster that ultimately allowed wash water to enter the tank through faulty pipework and isolation valves. In the months leading up to the gas disaster, there were various failures of equipment and, it is claimed, workers were sent to work at the MIC plant with inadequate training. A newspaper journalist, Raj Kumar Kaswani, wrote of his concerns saying that Bhopal was sitting on the edge of a volcano. During the disaster, gas was released from two locations, from the top of the MIC tower and from ruptured pipework along its base. The suppression sprays failed owing to a lack of maintenance and insufficient water pressure. The gas scrubber was inactive and was not designed for anything other than normal operations and could not have coped with the 200 times MIC it was presented with. 42 tonnes of methyl isocyanate were vaporised, spreading out from the plant into the neighbouring communities. Mr Chauhan was at home that night and explains what happened. He is standing by tank 610, excavated after the disaster and found to be intact. When there was a contamination in 610 tank of the water and other impurity, those impurity were highly catalytic impurity and the reaction started that was highly exothermic and the total reaction was complete, completed within two and a half hours. So the refrigeration was permanently closed down, the flare tower on that night was under maintenance. The scrubber was not operating. In case of emergency, if they want to start the scrubber, that will take near about 10 hours to start the scrubber. And when the gas leaked, so there was no proper information to the hospital, to the police, to the concern authority what type of leak took place from their plant, what are the antidote, how to treat them. There is no information provided by the They have provided uh, the information uh, that MIC is like a tear gas. When I came out my house on the street, the people were running. So I also come back to house and along with my family I also run. So in the morning, police was announcing near about 6 o'clock that there was a leak from the Union Carbide plant. Now everything is under control. You can go back to your home. When I was going back, so there's people coming to the factory and they were dying on the street. When we went to the community, there we saw a lot of people on the road, in the street. They were dying like anything, so vomiting, animals, human beings. <coughs> then I went to the hospital along with my friends. There we saw a horrible situation. I have seen more than thousand people. They have taken last breath in front of my eyes. Finally, we visit the control room. Many of the dials have now been stripped out, creating calls for parts of the plant to be preserved as a UNESCO heritage site as a memorial. Beneath the control panel that is labelled for the suppression sprays is an apparently original sticker that can be seen in many industrial control rooms around the world. It simply reads, Safety is everybody's business. <laughs>